Welcome to our lecture video in hydraulics and in this video we are going to discuss the branching pipe reservoirs at different elevations the three reservoir problem so we will uh, solve the three sample problems in this handout for the three reservoir problem we have two cases the case number one and the case number two for case number one, we have the head loss of pipe one is less than the head at the reservoir B. So from here, so we have we have the uh, reservoir A, B, and C, and the flow of water from reservoir A is going to. Uh, be divided towards B and C. If that happens, if the flow in pipe number 2 is towards the reservoir B, the piezometer reading here will be higher than the elevation of the reservoir B. That's why the head loss in pipe 1 will be less than the head in the uh, reservoir B. Because the head here, head of B, head of water at B and head of water at C, is from the elevation of the reservoir up to the elevation of the highest reservoir, which is A. So that's why you can see here, this is the elevation of A. And then from A to B, this is HB. And from A to C, that is our HC. Now, as for the head loss for the pipe, HF, it's located from the elevation of the reservoir up to the location of the piezometer. So, that is why we have here the point P here up to the level of reservoir A. That is the head loss on pipe A. Whereas, the head loss of pipe number two is from the P, so from the elevation of the P of piezometer up to the elevation of the reservoir B. Now, as for HF3, that is from the location of piezometer up to the, or that is from the elevation of reservoir C up to the location of the piezometer. So this is your HF3. So that is for case number 1. And we can derive these uh, equations from this setup. Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. The head, and head on B is equal to the head loss of pipe 1 and head loss of pipe two combined and for the head on uh, c we have the head loss of pipe one and the head loss on pipe number three now for case number two that means head loss of one is greater than the head on b why because the flow due to the flow being from the uh, highest reservoir a and from the flow on b is towards this junction here so we know that when we are uh, dealing with the move, movement of water the movement is from the region of high pressure to the region of lower pressure so from our case number one here the pressure here is greater than at B that's why the flow of water is from junction P up to the reservoir B for case number 2, since the piezometer reading is lower, that means this uh, the, the movement of water will be from B up to the junction P here. So again, this is our HB and HC and the difference will be the head loss of pipes. So the head loss 1, head loss of pipe 1, will be from the piezometer up to the elevation of reservoir B. So as you can see, HF1 is greater than HB. And then HF2 here is 
from the elevation of B up to the level of the piezometer P. Now for HF3, so we have our piezometer here. So from the elevation C, that is HF3. Now from this, we can derive the formula Q1 plus Q2, Q2 is equal to Q3. So from 1 plus 2 equals 3. So they will uh, merge. For HB, HB is equal to HF1 minus HF2. And then for HC, that will be HF1 plus HF3. So let's solve these uh, three sample problems in this handout. So for number one, three reservoirs A, B, and C are connected by pipelines 1, 2, and 3 respectively, which merge at junction X. The elevation of reservoir A is 300 meters and that of B is 285 meters. That, that means A, reservoir A is higher than B. So if this is our reservoir A, this is going to be our reservoir B. And uh, as for reservoir C, the elevation is unknown since we're going to look for it. So, we're going to make assumption whether it is below B or which is whether it is above B. Now, for the sake of assumption in our solving, in our solving this problem, we will assume that reservoir C is below B. Now, how do we know that our assumption is correct when we get positive values or when we satisfy the condition? So, if that happens, that means our assumption is correct. So, A and B, they meet at the junction X. The rate of flow from, uh, a, from a is 1.4 cubic meter per second. So, the rate of flow from A says there that this rate of flow is 1.4. That means Q1. So, this pipe 1 here is 1.4 cubic meter per second. The data are as follows. So, given our pipe, so we have our length, diameter, and the friction factor F. Compute for QB. QB meaning the, the uh, Q on pipe number 2. Compute for QC, that means Q on pipe number 3 and co compute for the elevation of reservoir C. So this is our reservoir. So they merge in junction X. So given the elevation of A higher than elevation of B. And also another given here is here. Obviously since elevation of a uh, Reservoir A is higher, so the flow here is downward, that is towards the junction X. And our Q1 is already given, so Q1 is 1.4 cubic meter per second. So, having our elevation, we can now have the value for HB. So our HB here is 15 meters. So here our C is assumed. Since it is assumed that it is lower than B, we can also assume the flow here. So green, let's use the color green. This is also assumed. If the value for this flow here is positive, that means our assumption is correct. Now, let's check first. How about this one? What is the flow direction? Is it towards B or away from B? So, let's uh, check. Given friction factor F, our formula, the, the formula that we're going to use is H of F is equal to 0 0.0826 
FL Q squared all over D raised to 5. So, HF1 is equal to 0 0.0826 given F of 0 0.0157. The length of uh, pipe 1 is 1,500. And given the uh, Q, Q1 is already given 1.4 squared all over diameter of 800. And that is raised to 5. So, what's the value for each F1? So, each F1 is 0 0.0826 times 0 0.0157 times 15 times 1.4 squared all over 0.8 raised to 5. So, 11.64. Each F1 is equal to 11.64 meters. And our HB here is 15. So, this is less than HB, which is 15 meters. Therefore, this is case 1. So, what is case 1? There. So, case 1 means, means uh, the flow on B is, or the flow on pipe 2 is towards reservoir B. So, this is our flow here. So, if that is the case, again, we can see here that our piezometer reading is higher than the elevation of B. So, this is our piezometer reading. So, this is our P. So, from P up to the uh, elevation of A, that is the HF1. From P up to the elevation of uh, B, that is HF2. Now, from C up to P, that is HF2. And from C up to the elevation of the highest reservoir, that is the HC. Okay, so, from this, we can derive equations. So, we can derive equations for Q. So, for, from case 1, that is Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. Now, we know that Q1 is given, that is 1.4. So, this is equation 1. Now, for HB, HB is equal to HF1. So, this is HF1 plus HF2. And that is also equal to 15. So, that is equation number 2. Now, since we're looking for QB, I think we can find QB now. Because at, so for letter A, at 2 from the equation, at 2 here, since we have now the value for HF1. So, HF1 is 11.64 plus HF2 is equal to 15. Therefore, we can have HF2. 15 minus 11.64, and that is 3.36. 3.36 meters. So, we can now solve for the value of Q2, or that is QB. So, we have here 3.36 equals 0 0.0826. What is the F for 2? For pipe 2 is 0 0.0162. 0 0.0162 times the length. The length here is 450 and diameter is 600. 
So, 450 times Q2 squared all over the diameter of 600. Square root of 3.36 times 0.6 raised to 5 all over 0 0.0826 times 0 0.0162 times 450. So that is 0 0.66. 0 0.66 cubic meter per second. And this is also equal to QB. So we now have the value for or the answer for number uh, letter A. Let's go to letter B. What's the value for QC or that is the Q3? For QC, now since we already got the value for Q2, so we can use equation 1. So B, at equation 1, knowing that Q2 is 0.66 plus Q3 equals 1.4. So Q3 now is equal to 1.4 minus 0.66. That is 0.74 cubic meter per second. And this is also QC. Next, we need to find the elevation of reservoir C. So, this is our reservoir C. How do we get it? We'll get that elevation by... So, that is 300 minus HF1. So, this is elevation 30 minus the HF1. minus the HF3. So that means HF1 plus HF3 so there minus the 300 that becomes the elevation of C. So since we have HF1 already let's find the value for HF3. So for C elevation of C is equal to 300 minus HF1 minus HF3. Then we have HF3 is equal to 0 0.0826. What's the F for 3? 0.0177. Length 1, 2. And diameter 450. So HF3 is... So, F is 0 0.0177, length of 1,200, and then the Q of 3 is 0.74 squared, all over the diameter of 450. So, H F 3 is equal to... 0 0.0826 times 0 0.0177 times 1200 times 0 0.74 squared all over 0.45 raised to 5 that is 52.06 so 52.06 meter therefore elevation of C now is equal to 300 minus HF1 minus HF3 that is equal to 300 minus 11.64 minus 52.06 236.3 meter meters so that's for number one Let's go to example number two. Two reservoirs A and B feed a third reservoir as shown. So this is our third reservoir, reservoir C. And uh, the flow is 
from A and B. So as you can see from the arrow, the flow is from A and B. They feed reservoir C. Therefore, that case is case number 2, wherein they feed the third reservoir C. So, this is case 2. That's why, as you can see, the piezometer reading is less than the elevation of B. So, assuming constant reservoir water levels given, compute the following with the use of the data given in the table below. So, 5, 1, 2, 3, given the length, diameter, and the roughness coefficient, n. Determine the value for QB, QA, and QC. QB being the Q1, QA being the, uh, no, no, QB being the Q2, and then QA being the Q1, and QC being the Q3. So from this figure, so from this uh, figure, we can see here that Given the elevation A, elevation B, and elevation C, HB is equal to 10 meters. HC is 80 minus 60, and that is 20 meters. Okay, so we can derive equations from here. So the equation here is Q1 plus Q2. They feed... Q3. So we have their Q3. This is our first equation. Second equation is the HB. HB is equal to HF minus HF1 minus HF2. So HF1 minus HF2 equals 10 meters. Next we have the HC. So, HC here is HF1 plus HF3. So, HF1 plus HF3 and that is equal to 20 meters. That is equation C. Another one here is elevation 70, elevation 60. That is 10 meters. And then HF2, HF3. So, HF2 plus HF3 is equal to 10 meters. Well, that is the equation 4. Since we are using roughness coefficient N, so the formula that we're going to use here is H of F, HF is equal to 10.29 N squared LQ squared all over D raised to 16 over 3. So since we have the values for HB and HC, as you can see from the relationship here of these uh, three equations, we can uh, solve for value for HF1. So Meaning, we're going to get HF2 in terms of HF1, HF3 in terms of HF1, and then use the first equation. So, let's do that by uh, getting Q. So, Q is square root of HF, HFD. 16 over 3, all over... 10.29 n squared then L. So, we're going to use this formula. So, we have our HF2 is equal to 10 minus HF1. No, no. It's so HF2 is HF1 minus 10. And then HF3 is equal to 20 minus HF1. 
therefore at 1, we're in Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. Let's use this formula here and substitute the value of each f based on this. So for Q1, we have square root of hf1. Diameter of 1 is... So what's the diameter of... Uh, so we have... So we all have 0 0.011 for roughness coefficient. Diameter for pipe 1 is 400, length of 1, 8. So length 1, 8, diameter 400. So diameter 400. And then we have the length. We can cancel this 10.29 and N already since they are all the same for all pipes. So, what's left here is the length equals, ano, plus, plus the Q2. Q2, using the head loss for 2 is HF1 minus 10, so HF1 minus 10. What is the diameter for pipe 2, 500, length of 2,000? So, 0.5 raised to 16 over 3, all over 2,000. Equals, for Q3, we have HF3 is equal to 20 minus HF1. And then, the diameter for pipe 3 is 800 and length of 4,000. So, 800... And then for thousand, so we can use shift solve here in our calculator. Now, if the calculator can't handle it, you can reduce these uh, values here. You can reduce them. We use this one here. So alpha x times 0.4 raised to 16 over 3 all over 1 8 plus square root of alpha x so that we alpha x minus 10 times 0.5 raised to 16 over 3 2000 equals alpha equals square root of 20 minus alpha x then 0.8 raised to 16 over 3 then 4000 and shift solve so each f1 is 16.2 Therefore, HF1 is 16.2 meter. So, we can now get the value for HF2. So, this is our HF2, HF3. So, HF2 is 16.2 minus 10 and that is equal to 6.2 meter, meters. HF3 is equal to 20 minus 16.2 and that will be 3.8 meters now for letter A we're looking for Q2 and then Q1 and then Q3 for letter A look for Q2 so our HF2 here is 6.2 6.2 is equal to 10.29 n of 0.11 squared length so let's use the value here length and diameter so length is 2000 q2 squared all over the diameter of 0.5 raised to 16 over 3 so q2 is now equal to
0.249 cubic meter per second. And that is also equal to QB. So that is for letter A. Next for letter B, we're looking for Q1. So for Q1, that is uh, HF1 is 16.2. So, 10.29, 0 0.011 squared times, what's our, so let's use the bodies here, length of 1.8, diameter of 0.4. Length of 1.8, Q1 squared, diameter of 0.4, 16 over 3. So, we have Q1 is equal to, so Q1 16 over 2, diameter 4, then 1,800, 0.234, so 0.234 cubic meter per second. And this is also equal to QA. Next for C, we're looking for Q3. So our HF3 is 3.8. So, 3.8 equals 10.29 times 0 0.011 squared. The length, let's use the value here, length 4,000, diameter of 0.8, length of 4,000, diameter of 0.8. So, Q3 is now equal to... times 0.8 then 4,000 so 0 0.481 0 0.482 cubic meter per second and this is also QC so for Q2, 1 and Q3 checking checking comes from this equation here from equation 1, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Ah, uh, no, equals Q3. So, checking. So, Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. So, Q1 here is 0 0.234 plus Q2, 0 0.249. Is it equal to 0.482? So, 0.234 plus 0.249. So, 0.483. So, this there's just a small discrepancy. So, correct. So, they are correct. That's for example number 2. Let's go to the last example, number 3. A water supply line delivers 18,950 cubic meters per day to the water distribution system from two tanks. Tank A has water at surface elevation 122 meters above, sea, above mean sea level and the other tank B at 91 meters above mean sea level. Line 1 from the 122 meter level tank is 300 millimeters diameter cast iron 3050 meters long and it is connected to a 300 mm diameter cast iron line 2 1830 meters from tank B to junction point C which is 61 meters above mean sea level. When water is flowing at the rate of 18,950 cubic meters per day in the pipe beyond junction C and using friction factor F is equal to 0 0.019 for all pipelines, determine letter A, the flow of line 2, B, the flow of line 1, and C, the pressure at junction 2. 
So from uh, this, we can uh, see that tank A has elevation 122 and tank B here is having an elevation of 91 meters above mean sea level. So B, tank B is lower than tank A. And given here are the uh, diameters of the pipes of A and B. So they're both 300 millimeters. The length of line 1 is given as 3050. And then it says here the line 2 has 1830 meters length from tank B. They meet, they both meet at point C, junction C, which is one, I uh, know, this is 61 meters above mean sea level. Given here, this is actually Q, cubic meter per day. So beyond junction C, there is another pipe. So it says here, when water is flowing at the rate of Q, in the pipe beyond junction C. So there's another pipe, the third pipe, wherein it's not, it's, it did not mention if it is going to a reservoir or maybe it's going to, to be distributed in a certain location. Still, this is uh, still in the uh, three reservoir problem because of the condition we're in we're going to use here three pipes. So this is our drawing. So pipe A is higher than pipe B. And this is the pipe that is beyond the junction C. So this is the junction C given the elevation of 61 meters. That's why there is a third pipe so here from the from the uh, problem this 1000 uh, this 18950 is going to be delivered from two tanks so from the two tanks they are to deliver this Q here so what we can understand here is that they both feed they both feed this pipe tree so the flow is from reservoir A then from reservoir B and we have here it feeds the pipe in this pipe 3 now, we can say that Q3 is the 18,590 cubic meter per day. So that is the Q3. So if they both feed this uh, pipe 3, what case is that? That is... Case number two, wherein the HF1 is greater than HB. So this is case number two. Oops. So the piezometer level here will be below the elevation of B. This is P. Then this is the elevation of uh, A. So this is HB. HB is 122 minus 91, that is 31 meters. For HC, so this is HC. So let's just name that as HC. 
And then we have the uh, HF1 and HF2. And then we have HF3. So this is HF1 from the elevation to the piezometer P. Elevation B up to the piezometer P is HF2. And then HF3 is from piezometer to the, to the uh, 3, pipeline 3. So from here, we can derive now equations. So the equation here is Q1 plus Q2, they feed Q3. And our Q3 here is 18,950 cubic meter per day. And we can convert this into cubic meter per second by having one day is equal to 86,400 86, 400 seconds in a day. So cancel day here. So what is now the value for Q3? So Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 18,950 divided by 86,400 seconds. That is 0 0.219. So, 0 0.219 cubic meter per second. And that is our equation number 1. And then, we have the HB. HB is equal to head loss 1 minus head loss 2. And HB is equal to 31 meters. So, let's name that as 2. So, we're looking for flow of line 2, flow of line 1. So, I think we can already use these two equations here. Since we're dealing with friction factor F, so the formula that we're going to use is head loss is equal to 0 0.0826 FLQ squared all over D raised to 5. So, looking for flow of line 2, so that is Q2, Q1, and then the pressure at junction C, or that is P. PC. Okay, for Q2, we're looking for Q2. So, using this relationship here, so let's get Q1 is equal to this in terms of Q2 and substitute it here. So, for letter A, at 1, we have Q1 is equal to point. 219 minus Q2. Let's use that at 2. So HF1 minus HF2 is equal to 31. So 0 0.0826. They all pipes have this in common. And 1 and 2 have the same diameter. It's mentioned here. They have the same diameter. Therefore, let's uh, put here the diameter 300.3 raised to 5. And then what's left here is the LQ squared. So length of 1 length of one line one is three thousand fifty length of line two is eighteen thirty l one is three thousand fifty q 
squared minus 1850Q2 squared. That is equal to 31. So, 0 0.0826 point point zero 0.019 all over 0.3 raised to 5 3050Q1 is 0.219 minus Q2 squared minus 1850Q2 squared equals 31. Then shift solve. 0 0.0826 times 0 0.019 0 0.3 raised to 5 3050 times 0 0.219 minus alpha x raised to 2 minus 1850 alpha x squared alpha equals 31 shift solve so there's two values for x so we have q2 equals point point zero eight or oh, eighteen fifty so eighteen fifty ship salt or oh, point zero seventy nine meter per second cubic meter per second q2 is equal to 1.034 cubic meter per second so which among this which uh, between this is the correct answer so our total here from the equation one says there that they feed the pipe number three so, Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 0.219. Therefore, since this one here is greater than 0.219, therefore, this is not the value for Q2, but rather this one here. So, this is the answer. This is our Q2. Next, look for the value for Q1. So, for Q1, that is 0 0.219 minus 0 0.079. So, Q1 is equal to 0 0.14 cubic meter per second next letter C pressure at junction C so what is the pressure at junction C we're going to use again the Bernoulli's the uh, energy at A which is the reservoir is equal to the energy at the junction C so knowing that the reservoir is open so how do, how will it affect this equation so the bernoulli's energy equation is velocity head plus the pressure head plus the elevation head equals the velocity head at c over 2g plus velocity head i know pressure head at c plus the elevation head plus the head loss now this head loss here is the head loss of the pipe so head loss of pipe one so because uh, we're dealing with this uh, section here so we're dealing with this section so the head loss will come from this pipe number one and knowing that this is stagnant here, there is no pressure head since it's open. And since it's stagnant, there is no 
elevation or velocity. There's no velocity head for reservoir A. What's left here will be the elevation head. How about at junction P? At junction P, so we will cancel also the velocity there since uh, it's here at the junction but there is a pressure head since it's inside. It's closed. And it also have the elevation head having elevation 61 here. So cancel for velocity and pressure head for A. Cancel velocity head for, for uh, C. So what's left here will be Z pressure then we have the elevation at C and let's compute for head loss 1 head loss of pipe 1 is equal to 0 0.0826 0 0.019 for N and uh, it is 3050 for the length 0 0.14 squared all over the diameter of 300 raised to 5. HF1 is equal to the head loss is equal to 0 0.0826 times 0 0.019 times 30.50 times 0.14 squared all over 0.3 raised to 5. So 38.61. 38.61 meters. Therefore, back from the equation, 0 plus 0 plus elevation 122 equals 0 plus PC over 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter plus elevation at C is 61 plus head loss 31.61. So PC, pressure at C is now equal to 122 122 minus 61 minus 38.61 all over 9.81 so ah no it's not light oh 122 minus 61 minus 38.61 times 9.81 so 219.65 so 219.65 kilo pascal so that's for example number three Okay, so that's all for this video.